Salutations, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the New Order Last Days of Europe, in which we are playing as a certain largish nation. Uh, no custom game rules, I think. Let's see. Yeah, just, just go ahead and start. No idea, no historical focus is on. So, the mods I'm using to begin this campaign TNO, Last Days of Europe, of course. Player of Peace Conferences, State Transfer Tool Mob, Color Buttons, Color Events, only five. In which we are playing as Tomsk. So, we're going to play as the Central Siberian Republic. Hopefully, we can do very, very well. And we shall do a year away from Voland. Voland. When a provisional leader, Boris Pasternak, decided on his experiment to form a new society of intellectuals in the depths of Siberia, little did he know how far it would get. The Republic found itself as a bastion of democ democratic tradition, as it became surrounded by tyrants, something sometimes coated in red paint, sometimes not. Even the writer president himself was soon overwhelmed by the task of guiding the nation through the storm after storm. Yet now in his 70s, Pasternak is an old and fragile man, yet at no point did he lose the respect of his followers, fellow artists, or scientists. Being sick, he has enclosed himself in the presidential residence, writing whether that is proposed law or acts, or creative texts of his own. The people who have surrounded him are the very best and have played an increasingly significant role in governing, but everyone knows that the days of our leader are numbered. When that time comes, we must be ready and continue his legacy. We have a total of two, two research slots. Let's go and grab some research speed, vacuum tube computing, as well as... Uh, horizontal, industrial, this is just better. Less growth, I don't, less cap is just never worth it. Never, ever worth it. Uh, military factories. We're probably going to need some guns. We're going to need some motorized. We're going to need some artillery. We're going to need some support equipment. Basic anti-tank, APC, some, like I said, support equipment as well. Uh, right there. I want to make some main battle tanks because I love tanks too much. Get some casts and grab some fighters, which is trying to hide away from us. And goodbye to you two. Cool. We have no, obviously, no dockyards because, well, we are not connected to the, to the ocean, so. And we have six unassigned divisions. We have two motorized, which is why I put motorized on immediately. Put them both under. Not you. I'm not going to use this guy because, well, I'm not sure. I want him to be the general for our motorized and tanks, which we will use eventually. So we're not going to get a field marshal yet. For our infantry, we shall start. Make a time go on a little bit first. Uh, let's see. That's not bad, Mikhail. I want to use this guy. As a field marshal, actually. Mikhail Prudnikov. That would be good for a field marshal. For infantry, though, Pavel. Uh, actually, Nikolai. Because he's an infantry officer, which is good. So, use you. And he's got a little cigarette. Uh, he's smoking a little bit. That's okay. You, we need the field marshal to use you because you have a panzer leader, which is what we want. Ah, passing on the torch. The president walked the halls of the presidential palace. Alone at this late hour. None walked with him but his memories. Echoes of a better time. Pale moonlight drifted through curtains of cloud in the sky, beaming through the hallway's grand windows. Once the Central Siberian Republic stood as one of the strongest successor states to the Soviet Union. Inheriting a wealth of industry from Bukharin's Siberian plan, the government in Tomsk set to work rebuilding a new Russia, one where the citizens would be free to prosper and free to give their opinion on governance. Yet the Russian anarchy would not spare central Siberia landlocked and surrounded by hostile governments and warlords. The beginning of the Republic's end had come in from secessionists in Novosibirsk. Uh, then Yagoda's accursed Soviet Union remnant had launched its Quiagotic invasion. Both nations had been bled to death, its children weeping as war and famine came to once peaceful land. In central Siberia, various provisional governors rose against the fatally weakened central government. Rogue military officers had blamed the civilian government for their own failures to put out anarchists and secessionists. One by one, provinces, or provinces seceded, only until Tosk, re Tomsk remained. The cold tugged at Pasternak's energy. Almost as much as a damn disease did, the dole to his office, wood in and regal, felt like a little heavier every day. But the president was not sure about... To throw in the towel yet. The CSR's old government had failed. Tom's current provisional government would not rule internally. Pasternak felt he and his generation had forgotten the Republic in this mess. The least they could do was give their best uh, to the next generation and pass it on with a torch. In the sleeping city surrounding the presidential palace, workers and poets, soldiers and politicians, all of the Republic's remaining children slept. All the president had to do alone in his office as usual was entrusted or to entrust the future to them. So much work to do, so little time. Pastor Neck chuckled. It would be long before he had all the sleep he needed anyhow. To the next generation from falling, failing hands. Cool. So, here we are. And as you as you can probably see from the title, maybe my goal is to eventually... Uh, well, first of all, we have Boris here. We are a conservative democracy. We have liberal democracy. We've got authoritarian democracy. And we have social democracy under a very cool guy named Dimitri. So, here's how you gotta play Tomsk. We have a wide Duma, like the, the modern December society, like its forebears, has looked, long looked, to the West for constitutional developments. 
Popularly elected legislatures are too easily swayed by populism and dem demagoguery, whereas appointed legislatures are callous and distant from the common man. As such, the Decembrists have modeled their Duma on a bicameral model. A lower house elected by the people is able to propose laws that are then analyzed by a, an appointed upper house. The upper house's powers are constrained, and its members are some of the Republic's most respected citizens from all political origins. What we want to do is go humanist, because I love me some Shostakovich. Hmm, love it. And I, because I'm a musician, I'll be honest, first episode here, I'm a musician, so I, I, I saw, like, Shostakovich was leading when I was playing, I think, as Sablin, so, in Bratia, Bratia, so... I had to do this, but the years of steel, the years of years of ashes. An entirely unproductive day. These had been a rarity in President Pasternak's long and eventful life. Now the toil of illness and age were making such days a much more common occurrence. Boris Pasternak had thus spent the day reminiscing as he spent or rest in his bedroom. He emerged as one of the key early leaders of the old Central Siberian Republic. Things had never been easier or evident. Some wanted a continuation of Bukhara and Soviet Union. Others in the army preferred a much more authoritarian type of government. A permanent military emergency until the nation could be reunited. But Pasternak and his allies had appealed to the intellectuals of Tomsk, who dreamed of a freer future. They had also appealed to the common man, promising to the worker prosperity in return for their help. Now, the president had found himself the leader of a much reduced republic, its democracy temporarily suspended by provisional government, its economies in shambles. Time had made a mockery of these early plans. Pasternak had been surprised to see the republic back at back his continuation as emergency provisional president. Had he not embodied everything that had gone wrong with the CSR? Yet the people in Tomsk had somehow kept their trust in him. Even the workers dutifully continued their shifts in the great industrial works after having backed the provisional government in a referendum. The food situation was not excellent, but at least it was stable. Perhaps more among the poor or the elite wished a chance another leader in these most dangerous times. General Shap uh, Shapshnikov had ensured the loyalty of the rump army to civilian institutions. The president felt a bit humbled by the trust shown to him. He also knew his people expected much more in return. This did not worry him the unduly. His final projects would soon be presented to Tomsk leadership. Just as Pasternak had put his affairs in order before his passing, so too would the Republic's affairs be arranged. A reading of his political last wills was in order. And right now, like any good Russian nation, we got to scan for loot. We're not, you know, that's that. so here. We have the upper and lower houses. Right, we got to get humanists with 23.5, 18%. That's too low, in my opinion. So, what we have to do is first read a focus. And the provisional government. The provisional government, located in the only major city we still have control over, was formed by a circle of the president's close friends and associates. Only the most loyal, who in many cases had even followed him in his journey eastwards back in the days of the war, were allowed to participate. The provisional government, in its years in power, has thankfully managed to stay above the bickering between different factions and salons, paving the way to a constitutional and true democracy. With this inevitable passing coming closer and closer, Pasternak has made his wish clear for the Republic. This government's goal has been unified, or fulfilled, a smooth, and a smooth transition to to the intended system is ensured. Thus, the next step is elections, where the voices of the people will be heard. It is time to finally begin the process of disbanding this authority. So, uh, what we got to do is ask for more support in the lower house, ask for more support in the upper house, and basically, right now, we are currently Decemberists. we got to lower their authority, but once our leader passes away, it doesn't matter. He's he's going to go bye-bye. Um, so, in the meantime, we got to make sure we got to lower modernists, the scientists, as well as the Bastillards. So good. lower them, lower them, and here's the district map. We, as we want to go social democracy for this campaign because of Shostakovich, which I hope he stays for the entire campaign. Uh, he has not a lot of support, <laughs> as you can see. Um, he doesn't even have any area. We have Novosibirsk, Kemerovo, Krasnoyarsk. So, we'll see what happens. And the Reichs, Las Cancos, if you'd like to read about the Herald and Courier. Has the Space Race been won? I don't know. But all I do know is that we have a cup of decaf coffee here to keep us nice and warm, but lullabies for the Old West. Another glass of vodka the older man offered. Mixian Sla accepted with a nod. He had long given up encouraging his friend and mentor to quit drinking. It's always saddened him to see the old composer reduced in health. No one was spared by time after all. Both friends toasted to their old homes in the West, to the streets of St. Petersburg, to the alleyways of Warsaw. Both lost to the years fascist jackboots, keeping them drowning in the ebbs of time until even memories were dissolved. The two friends did not particularly enjoy musing on painful memories. Yep. The fall of Europe cast her shadow on both musicians' lives. Through the tragedy, Dmitry Shostakovich could find echo in the more recent catastroph catast catastrophe of the destruction of the Central Siberian Republic. A nation of hope and progress crushed by militarism is corpse embalmed by faceless bureaucrats and kept on display. Who is there, or what is there to be done? Asked Miss Chesla. His mentor gazed into the distance absently minded absent-mindedly pushing back up his glasses. Finally, the old composer spoke. I have been discussing with fellows of the Humanist Salon. I will run for presidency. Anticipating his friend's objection, Shostakovich lifted his hand. Ironic, isn't it? Even as a poor Pasternak has a foot in the tomb. I stand in line behind him with my own poor health. Yet, something must be done. The president is a good man, and his call for election is the right one. I'm afraid, Mr. M. So many candidates running, none of them understand why the old republic failed. Everyone has solutions to be implemented top-down. Orders and instructions for the poor workers. But who will listen? Who will cherish the common man, the elite, so-called equals, their brothers and sisters, the old CSR 
did not listen to men in Altai and Novosibirsk. To the anarchists, to the poor and the hungry, I, I, I'd like to do something, try to do something about it. Uh, Michilsla, after a time being just of a victim of events, I... Shostakovich fell silent. The young musician put his hand on his mentors. It's never too late to try, Dimitri. Now, how about we honor this little bottle of final time for the day? The older man smiled and nodded. They drank to the future for once. Ah, yes. Mr. Shostakovich, the composer of The Age of Gold, The Bolt, Suite for Jazz Orchestra number no. 1 and 2, The Gadfly Suite, and of course one of my favorites, Festive Overture. Changing the guard, though. All eyes turned to him when he entered the room. Concern, sorrow, pity. A mixture of emotions was evident in the assembled visages. The president was used to seeing the progression of his cancer on the faces of those he did not meet often. The men were from a range of backgrounds, industrialists, academics, bureaucrats of the provisional government. A few outsiders looked awkwardly, or stood awkwardly, next to General Shapna... Shaposnivich... I am sorry, I cannot read right now. The trusty general had followed P Pasternak's directives. The president nodded gratefully at his old friend. The general saluted crisply. Pasternak began speaking. Gentlemen, my time is probably more limited than yours, even. A few awkward laughs. Pasternak continued, I've gathered you today to express my thoughts on the provisional government. I think none of us are particularly satisfied with its progress. A few nods of assent. What was supposed to be a temporary measure to trim the old apparatus of the CSR, recalibrate our economy, and tend to our diminished army has now stretched into months and then years of sluggish progress. Political opposition has rightfully pointed out that without elections, our legitimacy is ever dwindling. Pasternak sat in his chair and addressed his attention to the outsiders. Men of the salons, all and not shy about partaking their thoughts on the provisional government, good. I've invited these gentlemen from the so-called Decembrist Bastillard Humanist and Modernist Societies. Many good ideas have been discussed in the city's salons over the past few months. i followed the renewal of the capital's cultural and political scene with much interest, and I believe it is now time to end the provisional government. A murmur threatened to boil into a debate. Pasternak rose a hand to silence it. This will be done with good order, and a suitable new constitution will be implemented. Go gentlemen. Those secessionists and rebels have shown more daring than us, and have seized a moment. I believe it is time to do something, or do some mobilizing of our own, and tap into the great minds of the Republic to see it endure into the next generations. I would like to hear the assembled men in this room detail what remains to be done before new elections can be called. Let's begin with you, General Shaposhnikov. Shap Shaposhnikov. I'm sorry, I cannot say his name right now. For many voices, a consensus will soon emerge, in which we do the first draft. Even though he knows that his provisional rule shall not last much longer, our president is willing to do anything for the democracy he has built in central Siberia. From his lavishly decorated house and with the help of advisors, he's begun writing the foundations of a document to lead the country into the future. That document is a constitution. A constitution is of the utmost importance for a state such as ours. Pasternak has only been left with one job to do, and that is to show the intellectuals and salons the path to their dreams through a simple manuscript. He is based on everything from the laws and ideals of short-lived Republican Russia to the constitutions of the Western world. Freedoms and liberties in expression and religion shall be protected, while the people will elect their representatives. It is far more certain that any successor to him will take Pasternak's first draft and sculpt it into a proper constitution for the years to come. Very, very good. And the first order of business, I think, would probably either to lower the December Decemberists' salon popularity, or lower the salon authority of the modernists. And assassin strikes at Hitler. Well, regardless of that, time to take a sip of decaf coffee. Hmm, not bad. Only point three political power or command power a day. Not ideal. Got twenty six here. I want to get more support down here. More support would be pretty good for humanists. Because right now, we're 23.5. 18% ain't very good. I'm going to maybe wait for authority here just because Decembers will go down, boosting us up. So we might just go with a Salon popularity. So let's go to the lower house first. And it, it decreases December's Salon authority, increases our own and others, but greatly increases our support in the lower house. So let's go and do that. Now, I'll be honest here. Oh, we can... Pr Ooh, raids. Oh, I want to do some raids. Ooh. Western Siberian, Siberian Black Army, Novo, and Atle. I want to do it against Kamerovo or Krasnoyarsk. Either one of those two. Let's do it over there. Uh, let's see. So, uh, as I was trying to say before I interrupted myself, I'm not really sure how to do the legacy of the Siberian Black. So, here are our national spirits. We have... Come on. Come on, game. Like you see, the Siberian plan, minus 5% consumer goods. You can customize it. Uh, oh god, Spirit's the successor. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe Gang of Four, maybe? Uh, formation of the Salons, which looks really awesome. Warlords of the City, and Provisional Government. Now, we can alter Legacy of the Siberian plan with our decisions down here if we so choose to do so. We just gotta make sure discontent does not build up too much. Which has all sorts of effects for us. I This is my first campaign literally playing anyone in Central Siberia, so I don't know anything or very little about this at the time of this recording. So what, when you guys play as, or when you have 
the legacy of the Siberian plan. Which ones do you guys normally choose? Let me know in the comments below, because I'd like to know what you guys normally take. Because now they all cost political power, and they all have good buffs and even some debuffs. Ew. Increased worker discontent, that's not cool. But anyways, let us do suspend the provisional government so we get a little bit more stability first. It is time now. The stage is set for the new era of Russian democracy, or rather, perhaps the stage is set for the final death of the Central Siberian Republic. President Pasternak is set to announce as the citizens of Tomsk the dissolution of the provisional government after shepherding us through years of crisis and stabilizing the situation. It is a little sad to see the last remnants of the Central Siberian Republic go, but as democracy is a process that sees endless death and rebirth of political power, so must the provisional government go for something else to take its place. And we shall be drafting the political arena. Rings of paper were filling up every possible surface on the presidential office. Once in a while, the Muse secretaries came in to stabilize the tottering piles of paper. Law and history books were strewn about, opened at seemingly random pages. In the middle of it was all the president, busy at work. It was no easy feat to draft a constitution, even with the dozens of legal advisors who had been given their own section to work on. Harder was still what Pasternak had in mind, a living, breathing thing in which we all would see the republic they envisage. Or envisioned, really. Pasternak's constitution would end the provisional government and begin a new era in the Republic, an era of experimentation, an era of wild and crazy ideas. Pasternak's task was to avoid placing himself in the center stage. His duty was to build a theater where all sorts of players might enter and leave the Republic's political sphere, bringing in their own ideas and visions of the future. People would add to, on to the constitution and remove some things, yet it would live in a spirit, a spark of Pasternak's own dream and failed ambitions. On and on the work went. Occasionally a lawyer came in to discuss. In the afternoon, a nurse administered the president for his medicine for the day. Work progressed at a good pace. Every few days, a comp compilation of recent ideas and changes were sent to the advisors both within and without the, the provisional government. The president worked feverishly, a madman maestro directing a raucous orchestra into simple and enjoyable harmonics. All the world stage and in the hall of mirrors, Nikolai entered his favorite bar after a long shift. Working at the foundry was hard work, grueling work. The pay, however, was quite good. All the better provide for his family. The bar's usual layout was much changed that evening. Tables and chairs had been arranged in a wide circle around a makeshift podium of bar stools. On it stood a gaunt figure of a man, the skeletal individual, dressed as an English dandy, reciting line after line of lewd poetry, a beer mug in one hand and a kibosh pipe in the other. Or a kibosh pipe. Uh, the bar's habituals roared with laughter and hollered at the strange figure. When the poet ended his rec recitation, cheers and whistles crowded him out in the bar. A few of the men turned towards the door and noticed the confused Nikolai. Oi, Koylia, look at what we've got here, an actual presidential candidate. The emaciated poet turned to face the newcomer, bowed toward him, the makeshift barstool podium shaking. Daniel Harms, poet, author, not-so-humble representative of the Trinity Group for Culture and Industry, known to all as the Bastille Yard Club at your service. Nikolai, of course, knew the of the author, most well-known for his children's books of well and his, his charity work to teach literacy. An eccentric man, nowadays a front for the latest anti-worker Bastillard society. Why bring politics here, poet? I thought you and the Bastillards had little to wish, had little wish to listen to the people. Carms nodded, climbing down from his podium to walk towards Nikolai. Of course, of course. I'm an honest man. Why would I run on a campaign of lies? As president, I want a strong republic, able to smash those efforts in Novosibirsk and provide work and prosperity for all of us. Of course, every party claims that, but every party, ours, claims that they care about the workers, don't they? Only the best arts are honest in their indifference. A chorus of laughter, a beer made its way to Nikolai, who cheered with the strange politician. Perhaps the elections this year would prove or provide entertainment at last. A man of the people. You know what? Ere this, I don't know, election years, sometimes they can be filled with hilarity and a lot of anxiety. Uh, but you gotta enjoy it for what it is. Just enjoy everything for what it is. Because some days it'll all go bye-bye. And I will secu uh, secure control as a warlord just because we want more stability. Stability is so important in, in anything you do in Hoi 4. So we're gonna scan for loot. And I, we're waiting to get more. Oh, yes. I wanna beat up Kemerovo because I think in my last campaign when I played as I, the Beer and Union, which was a campaign before this, work, I think, won the unification for Russia. And right now, he's got a lot of manpower. He's got two to four divisions. We have six, so... Actually, how about how about over here? How strong are these guys? They're 51,000. Oh, two to four. Oh, you know what? Uh, you know what? We're going to risk it. Why not? Oh, can we raid against them? Oh, they need to have at least... Oh, oh, they, oh, they must have spent it. Ah, uh, we're going to get new industrial equipment, because equipment, I think, is probably... It might be the best... Let me know, let me, what do you think is the best? Because usually I think industrial equipment is best because you get more factory output, you get more construction speed. Schools are okay. Research facilities are really just okay as well. Workers are not bad to do either. And agricultural methods aren't bad, they're just not great. But an end of an era. Oh no, President Pasternak stood in front of the Cathedral of the Epiphany, alone on his podium. The Cathedral had seen better days, as had the President, the assembled crowd thought. Even both so... 
Even so, both stood, proudly dominating Lenin Square. More and more men and women crowded into the plaza, lured by the end of the workday to see the president in what all soon would be his, what his one final public oratory. Citizens, friends, I come to you personally to announce the end of the provisional government. In the aftermath of the great calamities that fell in the Republic, you came forward and granted us our request for an emergency provisional government. With this vote of confidence in hand, the government and I have blindly stumbled forward, like drunks holding onto a train ticket, afeared of losing it and being unable to reach their destination. I now realize that our greatest mistake was that we tried to shoulder on the burden of riding the ship of state all on our own. For this great arrogance, this government has found itself unable to lead the dark valleys or Dark Valley, in which it has erred over the past few years, unable to lead its people to a better place. The provisional government must end, and in its place the people must take up their role, act on to the power granted to them by our republic. A thousand, a million assembled candles will unite to illuminate our path. Citizens, I simply ask for your forgiveness, and thank you for your years of support. I fear no evil. But that man, hmm, but that man. Uh, power and associations, we'll do this last, because... Why not? Because I want to get as much human support, human support as possible. So we'll do Legacy of a de Democratic Russia. The Russian Republic, murdered in its infancy by the Bolshevisms, or Bolsheviks, shackling Russian freedoms to a fragile and unsteady regime. The Central Siberian Republic, a fragile creature lying in the ashes of the Soviet Union, torn apart by traitors and rebellions. Our Republic is heir to two of the 20th century's most disappointing governments, inheritor to a dream twice shattered by external events. This dream shall not be betrayed by a th be betrayed a third time. The dream of Russia. Free, its people's future taken back from fascists and despots. Citizens to arms fight for what is yours. We get political power and for stability. Or not, not stability, we get war support, which is nice. I love I love war support. Uh, anything else over here? Ask for support. Uh, we're going to weaken popularity. Uh, yeah. Modernists, they have the most seats. Modernists. Yeah, I've got to focus on modernists and Decemberists. Even though we are December, so we can't really lower our own support right now. So, if that's the case, modernists, here you go. Upper house. Oh, I'm joining with my cat, Binky. Oh, Bink. You okay, Bink? Uh, let's see. Upper house. What was it? They had upper house? Yes, they did. Sorry, my bad. Uh, decrease it in the upper house for now. That's fine. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't ask for support. We want to decrease it. Yeah, that's my bad. I almost clicked on that to get even more support for them. No, 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 no. So we need 30 political power. That's okay. Dreams of a scientist. Andrei Sakharov. Set in his small study, dimly lit by the old light bulb that had kept him company for so long. Thoughts came into his mind one minute and went out the next, a never-ending cycle. He looked back down towards his papers, calculating on calculations on some ideas other than the other. But today, it wasn't the physics problems he cared about. He wanted to work on Russia's problems, the failures of their democracy and the failures of their military. All of Russia's modern history seemed to be a failure. They thought back to the past, when the Central Siberian Republic fell into disarray. Sakharov had not been a major politician, but now he went to meeting after meeting in the modern salons. It seems his promise had grown. Andrei continued to think. But he was ignoring his physics papers now. They didn't matter as much. Tomsk, Siberia, Russia, everything had been destroyed by dictators, past and present. They needed to move into a new future, one of democracy and modernity. Now Andrei dreamed. He dreamt of a modernist future and a modernist Russia. One that cared about the prince people and improved their everyday lives. One where he was president. What Russia could be like with a strong, strong democracy and a powerful government. What Tomsk could be like if it could stand up to the despots and radicals of, to the south. And what Siberia could be like with a functioning economy and a higher quality of life. As his pen continued to write word after word on the papers, his old light bulb dimmed more and more, barely lighting his desk at all. Andre smiled and he left his office to finally replace it. A dark world grows ever brighter. I'm ready, I'm ready. Let's see, war planning, secure control, and plant worker concessions. Alright, here we go. We're gonna work us weaken their authority, because that's Oh, look at that. Modernists have a lot of support. That is not ideal. Hey, we're up at 24%. At 20% right there. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, that's not ideal. Ooh, that's too much blue. I love blue. That's my favorite color. But that's just too much blue. Uh, military category. Proposed military program. Has upper house majority? We will propose our army's modernization project to the Duma. Oh, military expansion doc. Oh, I didn't know that. Central Siberian expansion. Oh. Well, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Let's see. I'm not really sure what to do here with this stuff yet, so... Secure control. I want more weekly stability, to be honest with you. That'd be good. Cool. Emptying his office. It had been an ungrateful task for sure. Somehow, the young bureaucrat knew he'd miss the job anyway. He lifted another stack of office supplies into the box. Few remained at this time of the day. Most had already moved out in the days preceding the announcement. Now only the young bureaucrat and a few stragglers worked on moving out of the building. Here and there, a few radios kept them in company, all of them humming a record of Pasternak's speech in dissolving the provisional government. Their office had been one of the many subcommittees of the provisional government's Ministry of the Industry. Diligently, the men and women had counted on what remained of the CSR's industrial assets, what had been lost to the rebels, and what needed to be done to stabilize the situation. In the end, all their efforts had not amounted to much. 
The provisional government did not have a lot of resources to be devoted to massive industrial re redevelopment of efforts. Better to maintain the slow decay than risk it at all. Not was all lost, however. The reports have been compiled in easy-to-digest analyses and then spread to the public by the government itself. The bureaucrats had heard that among the circles of the rapidly expanding political clubs, his works or his team's works had been widely discussed and argued about. The bureaucrat smiled, closed his box. Perhaps the new administration would have to work for him and his team, flinging a light into the future and pursuing a feverish dream. Oh, we didn't do this one too. I want to get stability first. Pasternak's new basic constitution have been distributed widely throughout our nation so that every citizen can read it. Now it's time to legislate on its adoption. A committee consisting of members of the old provisional government as well as envoys from the four great salons has been assembled to review, review the constitution point by point. This tedious work must be done so that the new nation can or has a firm basis to stand on and so that each salon's candidate has a good idea of what they're campaigning on. Great writing is achieved through Toro or through thorough editing. Oh, this is a little bit of a typo. It is time for the poet president's last great work to be made a reality and ready for publication. The theoretician and the engineer. Oh, thank you for the papers, Sak Sakharov said, taking the bundle of Tomsk morning papers from Kamov's Kamov's hands. How much were these? They sat in the parlor of the modernist section of the building. Shelves upon shelves of scientific books and journals books lined the alcoves of the room. Outside they could hear the sleepy city of Tomsk rousing herself awake as cars thrummed and blared. And paper boys announced the most recent items in the papers aloud. Eh, Kamov said, taken aback by Sak Sakharov's manners. You don't have to do. It's pennies on the dollar anyways, Professor. Come on, Sakharov parried. Wearing a kind of a kind and serene smile. I'd feel bad if I'd have my papers at your expense. No, Professor Kamov laughed. It's not even ru rubles. Drop it. Kamov laid a hand on Sakharov's, Sakharov's shoulders. Think of it as a favor for the coffee the other day. Sakharov smirked. Thanks. He glanced at the front page of the newspaper and read the headline. President Pasternak, terminally ill. New times for the Republic. You know, newspapers have this uncanny ability to deliver even grave news with bombast. Maybe it's the capital letters. Would newspapers even exist ten years from now? If the Republic elects you, I think not. You flatter me, come off. I'd serve a term or two and then get out. Got to keep the system running. Have you thought of a successor? A successor? You'll think... I think you'll do. The remark shot, come off. I am but a theoretician. You are an engineer. I lay the foundations. You make it work. But I... Uh, I am going to get some coffee. Want some? Milk and two cubes, please. I like my coffee. Nice and dark. Hmm. Milk and coffee? What? Sugar and cream and coffee? What? I like my coffee. Like I like my cats black some of them some of them cool uh yes yeah, get some more support in the lower house and the upper house too that'll be good to do 24 20.8 percent oh, very very good and we only have 88 million in gdp that's not bad and we're not we have no debt which is awesome now what i really want to see is us to smash the loving hell out of our enemies that's what i want to see really badly but the last of the old st petersburgers the young man knocked on the door a faint reply to enter quickly the secretary found his boss dmitry Lykovich, standing at the window with a cup of coffee on his desk a pile of paper was neatly stacked next to a typewriter the december society's new manifesto most likely the young man stood at the door awaited his boss's orders Likovich, like a watch looked to the horizon, no doubt observing the Tom River as it snaked next to the capital. The famous historian and medievalist had asked for a window view on the river. The reason was known to all, mentioned by none. The older man missed St. Petersburg, the city of his youth. No doubt he found the Tom River a poor substitute for the Neva, meaning the Baltic Sea. As the Tom River was to the Neva, so was Tomsk, the quaint Siberian city. To St. Petersburg, crisscrossed with bridges and canals, a treasure of the Russian people lost to the advancing tide of fascism. The young man thought to himself that it was a blessing that he was too young to know the sorrow of the older generation, the sadness of the last St. Petersburger. That's actually really sad. Like uh, Likhachov, finally turned to his secretary. Thank you for leaving me to my thoughts a few moments more. The manifesto is completed. Here, have others review it and distribute it. Yes, sir. The young man picked up the papers. So you're throwing your name in the hat? Likhachov nodded. I've... Faith in the Russian people, as he paused. His eyes distant for a moment. We've we've lost much these past few years, but we can rebuild. We must rebuild. If only to spite those who seek destruction, I think Harms and Sakharov and the other candidates, they get this. But they're too hasty to throw away the old days. We must bring the past with us. No go, we have much to do. The secretary nodded. Dmitry Lakachov smiled and nodded back. Headed to his desk, his cup of coffee forgotten on the windsill. No matter, the Tom River would still be flowing when his work would be done for the day. Like the, the Decembrists of old will fight to the west. Or someone will. Maybe we'll all die along the way. But you know what? C'est la vie. It is what it is. And it's time for... Who did I want? Nikolai? I think it's... Wait, that's a smoker. Um, Who did I want to lead everyone? First Amendments. Wait, was it... Wait, which, which guy did I want? Oh, there's this guy. Yeah. Mikhail. Just because he has, he's a trickster, he's a ranger already, and an improvisation expert, that is just so good. 
Nice. Cool. And let's go ahead and do it, pursuing a feverish dream. Our, advise, our adversaries mock us as soft, lacking in backbone, too fragile for the Russian anarchy. They decry our obsession with democracy, with freedom, and with fairness as unholy, or as, as wholly unsuited for the tough realities of modern Russia. Let them laugh, for the dream we chase so feverishly is a vision of a new Russia, unbroken, undaunted, freed from its past. Past. The Tsar's autocratic regime did not succeed in crushing the free spirit of her people, nor did the NKVD thugs terrorize their way to subservience. To say nothing of the general German fascists having hoped against a reason to see their nihilism and fact the character of our people, render subservient and incapable of dreaming of the future. That the Republic does not endure in spite of its dreams, but precisely because of them. We shall show the world the strength of our resolve. And D December's popularity just goes up slightly, slightly, slightly. We can't raid yet, which is disappointing. Anything down here? Mm, not really. I'll talk about. We'll do this more of the Siberian plan later on once we get. Our election's done. Let's go ask for more human support. Let's see. 24, 28.8. It's not bad. Weaken authority. We're going to go ahead and ask for more support to greatly increase it in the upper house. And then, of course, do some anti-modernist propaganda. So, which will be very good. Very, very good. At the very least, you slightly decrease modernist popularity. Which is good. And that is salon authority. So, that is right there. Not popularity, but salon authority. Which is good. Very, very good. District mapped. Very, too blue. Too blue for my liking for this campaign. Oof. Got it quite a while for stuff to research. Ooh. Ah, a feverish dream, my friends. But we shall now empower the associations. In the years since the grand evacuation of Russia's class of intellectuals to the central Siberia, they've had time to adapt to this new environment. Over time, though, as expected, they organize themselves into small groups and associations sometimes. They would be built on their common profession, giving way to teams of poets, musicians, scientists, and philosophists. Others were created on the basis of a common ideology or belief, many of which had a chance to be heard in the Central Siberian Republic. Tom's House is a vibrant and colorful collection of these associations, who will significant sway on how things are run in the last remnants of the Central Siberian Republic. If the president is to finally dissolve the government and begin the process of transition, these groups will be critical, giving their support to the system and being the founding blocks of democracy. Thus, they must not be abandoned by the administration, but instead empowered and encouraged. C'est la vie. Meijing. Oh, cool. Oh, what's going on here? Uh, ask for support. Nah, we good. Oh, they got more popularity now. Oh, 13%. That's pretty low. 23.6. 25.4. We're getting a little bit more, even though we don't have the total amount of seats. That's okay. That's okay. Ask for support. Uh, we probably got to do that. Anything else down here? No, not yet. That I really care about. Cool. We can weaken, actually, you guys. 30, 34. We, um, authority for modernists. We we're kind of already doing it. Propaganda. This is for authority. Decrease popularity. So this is decreasing popularity. And they are still pretty popular. If we lower them a little bit more, that might just be the thing that we need. And then we'll probably go for anti pastelard propaganda, and other ones, lower them as well. Because we're, we're catching up. We're really catching up, especially in authority. Oh, look at that. December is 4.6. Oh, my goodness. Now, we're still second to last place, which is not ideal, but... Later on in that focus tree, once we get through this first part, we will have the option of choosing which path we really do want to take, so. If you were wondering. Integrate the salons. In the revolutionary era, or in the era of revolutionary France, the salons were cultural hubs that encouraged the social interaction and were composed of intellectuals who could exchange and spread their own ideas. Much like that, then, the salons have been revived in our own small republic, and now by a new generation of artists and scientists who will still have the same goals and dreams, thankfully. They all have one in common their loyalty to an indivisible, democratic Russia, something that Pasternak's government believes in as well. It will not be difficult to begin the process of contacting these salons, aligning them to the republic's goals, and then finally integrating them into the social and political life of the nation which they reside in. Very very good and right now we're doing okay it's not great not great we're all building guns and trucks could be worse I guess could be much worse but what I really want besides getting social democracy here oh no 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 not the passing there'll be no more productive days for the post president or the poet president Boris Pasternak had laid in bed for almost two weeks now, coughing fitfully. His children attended to him, his old friends, old rivals came to visit him, his wife, Zenaida, had come to talk to him and they talked they had. She had forgiven him some, although not all. <laughs> Uh-oh. Better than that, than nothing. His love, Olga Ivinskaya, also had come by. He, how he wished he could have seen her more, have had something better for her than a few short visits, ushered in through a side door. Another regret for a life of regret. He had not done right to his wife or nor his mistress. Hopefully he had done right to his country. Harder and harder to stay awake, pitiful sleep, or fitful sleep, fitful sleep. Late afternoon coating the room in amber light. Standing by the bed, one of his sons saying something. Hard to see him as well, hear him well. I can't hear you well, and there's a mist in front of my eyes. He tried to smile, but it will go away, won't it? Don't forget to open the windows tomorrow. A giant passes away. Oh, no, no, no. Big sadness. The death of the author. Oh. 
and the permanence of the manuscript. If you want to read about this, go right ahead. Uh, it's already completed, so I'm not going to read it. And then, just before this skips over, uh, read about the permanence of the manuscript, because uh, it's probably going to autocomplete as well. Edward VIII, oh! Apparently God was fond of the English of the king this day. So, Media Blitz. The posters was cropped up from day one to the next with a little warning. Workers and scholars huddled together in the transitions reading the proclamation. Citizens, elections have now begun. Candidacy for the state Duma are now accepted from the four great political salons of the Republic. Per the late presidential or president's final constitution. Approved by the Electoral Commission. The socio-political rejuvenation of the Republic will pass through the popular movements known as the Decembrists, the Bastillards, the Humanists, and the Modernists. This college of political associations will tutor the reborn Republic through these uh, turbulent times. A party with presidential control of the Republic will offer a new constitution, allowing the people to experiment with their political institutions. Citizens, the Republic needs you. It has asked you so much already. Now in this zero hour, the nation needs your opinion, your insight. At the ballot box, inform us about your vision for the new era. You shall be tasked with voting for local representatives as well as a vote for a presidential candidate. Citizens, your help is critical. The news of elections ran through the nation like an electrifying current. Much remained unknown for now. In particular, a few know or knew the well knew well the four political parties that had been chosen for the election. Fewer still understood the implications of voting for a constitution. But the presidential candidates were among the most well-known men of Tomsk. The idea of moving past the era of controlled destitution with the provisional government was an appealing one. I'm going to wait for this to finish. Cool. And we shall do election season has begun. And we get that. See, that's why I already showed you guys that, because it completed in the last solstice day. Elections are afoot. The Republic stands at a crossroads, with several factions running for the state Duma, as well as struggling to gain the presidency. Pasternak's faith and the educated and talented members of Tomsk intelligentsia should not go unrewarded as a nation's be very best hammer out to one another's ideas, so that truth and progress spring forward at the ballot box. Set for the darkest day of the year, the elections will first seek to fill the Duma before a president is elected and a constitution is chosen for the nation's next four years. Oh boy, things are going to get crazy. Awesome. Scavenge for loot. We will immediately do that. And important, and we shall have our industrial equipment slowly improve. Now, does anyone else have loot that I can take away from them? Let's see. Anyone else have loot? Uh, yes. Siberian Black League does. That's not ideal to fight them right now, though. Because they are a bunch of crazies. Yeah, they got too many divisions for me to really do really well against. So we're not going to do that yet. But Kamarovo. Krasnoyarsk. You got to keep an eye on that. And over here, how are we doing? So they have 8.8%, 24.0, 26.8. Not Not bad. Modernists have got to go, though. Not support that. Even if we lower, like, if we do this, Propaganda Authority, we can still get more support that way. Even though we really want to lower modernist support. So, Consolidate December's Rule. pro December's Campaign. I don't know about that, man. An oh, that's good. Anti-Modernist Propaganda. Up to 26.2. And then 32.4. 32.4. Hey! It went up to 24.7. Not bad. That's They're just slightly more than us. So, let's try to lower December support next, then. The last solstice day in which we all have the open window. Among the various ideologues and thinkers who desire to shape the future of the Republic, the four great salons of the Bastillard, Decembrists, Humanists, and Modernist societies desire to take a hold of the doom and the presidency. As each faction makes its cases, it remains unclear which issue will be the dominant one for the electoral campaign. The citizens of the Republic can be are divided and remains to be seen in the Decembrists' platform of respect for tradition and rural democracy will triumph over the Bastillard and Modernist ideals of urban industrial renewal. Or perhaps Humanist society's social democratic platform of decentralized democracy and investment into the people will clinch the debate. Very, very good. Uh, and we are still December, so we can't really lower their support, which kind of sucks. Uh, I Modernists and Bastillards, whatever we can do to weaken them, pretty much. That's the main thing, I suppose, for now. Oh, what do we want to do? Wait, what do we have? Implement worker concessions, war planning, political campaigns. Not bad. I want to get through at least one more focus before we end today's episode, though. Nice. Couple days left. Anyone else have loot? Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Anti-humanist propaganda. No, we good. Propaganda authority. I don't exactly remember which one is more important to do. I want to go with lower popularity. We can't lower the Decembrists. So we're going to go with... I want to say modernist, but we can't. we've already lowered them. So we're going to go with this. Popularity. It might raise up the modernists a little bit more, but you know what? With the way we're going, it'll be okay. It definitely will be okay. Six more days, less than a week, until we can choose the next one. Hey, but poverty rate's going, getting better. 
as well as industrial equipment, as well as industrial expertise. So things could be a lot worse. In which we shall, we could do whispers of camadre. We could do the stemming or stammering of machinery. But let's do hum humming other music because as a musician, I got to choose it. You know, the soul of our republic is its music, its hopes, its dreams, and its letters. It is with these that a nation and society truly exist. The arts and culture are the backbones of history, where progress, where progress is actually made. The people of Tomsk deserve to enjoy the benefits of the arts and live whole and satisfying lives. People are not meant merely to survive; they are meant to thrive. That is why the humanist society believes in the dream of the republic citizens to master their instruments, the pen and the brush. The humanist desire to invest in their strengths and talents. A better Tomsk and a better Russia can only be created by the skills of its people, not merely its leaders. And unfortunately today, though, that is all the time that we have. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my link in the description below to join my Discord server if you would like to. And I will see you tomorrow as we shall be led, hopefully, hopefully, by Papa Dmitry Shostakovich. Thanks for watching and have a great, great musical rest of your day.